of factors such as socioeconomic background, ill health or unhealthy behaviours. For more, I'm joined by the study author, Professor Carmine Pariante from King's College in London. Thank you so much for your time. Tell us a bit more about the link between inflammation and depression. So this study is, is the largest ever conducted on this topic. And what we found is that um, depressed patients have higher level of inflammation um, measurable in the blood. I mean, as you know, inflammation is, um, is the normal response that the body has to infection, but also to other conditions of ill health, um, high diabetes or cardiovascular disorders. What it shows here is that Inflammation is also important for depression, and so it could be a target for understanding more the disorders and improving the treatment. How did you measure the connection? It was a process of elimination, wasn't it? So initially we used uh, data on C-reactive protein, which is a clinically available biomarker of inflammation. It goes really, really sky high during infection like COVID, for example. But we were able to measure small but significant differences in levels between depressed patients and controls. And then we looked at all the factors that could explain this association. So the fact that depressed patients tend to smoke more, tend to be slightly overweight, tend to come from uh, a more difficult socioeconomic background, they tend to have more life trauma in their, in their in their lives. All of this could explain. However, once we adjust for all of these factors statistically, we still confirm the association. So there's something core about inflammation and depression, something, a biological process that is important for the cause of depression and possibly for the treatment. So, so things like smoking and obesity are linked, but it's not necessarily the whole explanation. Exactly, absolutely. They are linked. They in itself increase inflammation, and of course, they are more frequent in people with depression, but they themselves alone do not explain the association. Why do you think it's important to understand this link between inflammation and depression? Well, there's two points, really. First of all, uh, up to one-third of all depressed patients don't respond to currently available antidepressants. And so if we can help at least some of these patients, uh, those with higher level of inflammation, by adding an anti-inflammatory to their treatment, uh, this would be a major step forward. But also, I think it's important that the idea that depression is and mental disorders in general, but depression in particular, is not just a disorder that is in the brain or in the mind. It, has everywhere, it is everywhere in the body. It's there are measurable biological abnormalities in the blood. And so it really brings mental health and physical health together. So is the idea that you can, if you treat the inflammation, you might be able to inadvertently treat the depression or reduce the risk Absolute. of depression? Absolutely. So there are already uh, currently clinical trials and studies going on to test what's the best anti-inflammatory that could be added to an antidepressant. We are too soon to make a clinical recommendation, and I really want to urge all the listeners not to go, not to go to buy anti-inflammatories over the counter and start taking them, uh, because of course there are also adverse effects by combining antidepressant and anti-inflammatory. However, there are things that can be done: physical exercise, improving diet, reducing weight, um, omega-3 fatty acids, so fish oil, all of this is a natural way to decrease inflammation and improve depression until we have the, the medication that we know will work. Such an interesting study, Professor Carmine Pariante. Thank you so much for your time.